Blender, or these aren't good softwares. They're great. In fact, I, I actually high, highly encourage people to start using Blender, and including myself. I'm starting to look into it. You know, but for low poly modeling, I can use Blender a lot if you want some uh, resource. Oh sure, yeah. But uh, the thing about Blender is that they have actually a huge resource library, right? Like Blender Guru. It's not yeah. a matter of like, like. It's not a matter of like. Oh man, I like. They have like probably one of the best tutorial uh, system for their software that I've seen for any other software. Like people really love themselves in Blender, so that's why I've been committed to kind of learn it. Um, I just need to put some time and effort, just like I'm talking to you about it, right? Like you just need to get into 3D code. Same thing, right? Yeah. So, so this is irrelevant. The software you use, if you feel like Blender, then Blender's fine. Maya's fine. You know. Um, let me show you kind of the benefit of using Silo. So. Uh, for instance, you know, everything's just hotkey based and I'm a big fan of hotkeys and it's hotkeys that make sense. All right. Um, yeah, let's do like a bust too. Actually, I should have. Let's do this. All right. So there's like a character face of some sort. And like I said, the software doesn't really matter. I just happen to love myself silo. What about SketchUp? Is it too basic? Huh? SketchUp? Uh, SketchUp. Yeah. yeah, SketchUp, I think you could do some stuff, but like what you need is just like a model making tool. And I mean like a model. So let's mirror. See, mirroring is a hotkey and it just does it live. It's great. SketchUp is great if you want to do some architectural elements and stuff like that. But if you want to do some organic, like a face or whatever, it's, you, you just can't. But sure. it's, it's really. It's really easy to learn, right? It's really fast if you want to do like block out like uh, perspective or something. It's really you know, yeah. That's why I've heard. Great. I've heard the same thing. Yeah, I guess every environment concept artist uses it at a point. Yeah. Almost every. Everybody. Yeah. So there, it's got ears. You know, I don't have to put a nose on this or anything. I don't have to do any more modeling. I think this is fine. Let's flatten this out just so we have something to work with when we're painting. Okay. So you got this, like, shape. Right? And what you can do, what you do need to do is you need, like, three different, like, if you apply different materials, it makes it easier to UV in 3D code. So what I'm just going to do is apply material one to that, apply material two to that, and then apply a material, whoops, zero three on that. So you use 3D code to do the UV, you don't do it in silo? Yeah, because it's just all easy, it's super easy. <laughs> You'll see. And so uh, you export the scene, all right? So I'll just put this on the desktop for now. Test. Demo. There you go. So it should export all that stuff. Let's boot up 3D code. Let me close out silo. Because so I have too many programs running. I can't. Uh, specifically because I'm using uh, GoToMeetings. Normally it wouldn't be a big deal. But because I am using, that's fine. If I didn't do, if I didn't export correctly, then it's okay. I just make that same model in literally a minute. <laughs> it's 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 just for demonstration purposes, right? So then, yeah, you just go UV map mesh. You can go to the desktop, test demo, whatever, and it says keep UVs. It says yeah, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, or you can do auto mapping. That's fine. And see, so there's material one, two, three, and there's like you know different text resolution for those. All that stuff's fine. You can change it to Unreal, Unity, no smoothing. Pretty much leave everything at default, unless probably you want to change the rendering engine, right? If you want to do out of Blender or whatever, Unity, 
game engines are probably most important, but uh, at this point, it really doesn't matter because it's like a hand painted texture, right? So it's going to be unlit anyway. So, or at least most likely it's going to be unlit. So you hit OK. So it brings it into the UV room, and it does a really decent job of unwrapping it right out of the bat, right? It's actually not that bad. But what you can do is just unwrap in here. And what you, first thing you got to do is just clear uh, clear seams, so it's just completely from scratch. And then you just hide um, you hide your uh, the different materials. Like like I said, I use the materials to separate the UV groups, right? And then you just hold Shift and bam, you may mark the seamed. That looks great. So let's just do the bottom part too. And it's as easy as just Shift clicking. To get the loop so this is done done with that move on to the next thing it, it's really similar to blender actually yeah like i said blender is great you can do a lot of things out of blender but like uh i, I don't uh i don't like silos unwrapping um not because i think it's garbage just because i like how you uh 3d code unwraps and once i'm done i'm ready to paint it's like I don't have to go, I don't have to upload, a, I don't have to start a new software, or I don't have to open up a new thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm ready to go. Yeah. So it's, yeah. And it's kind of like, and 3D Coat's unwrapping is made for itself, if that makes sense, right? If you unwrap it in 3D Coat, it does an even better job in the painting room, right? Yeah, my, my plan for 3D was to try to get a model done all in 3D Coat, because you should be able to do it, like the retopology, re UV and stuff. Yeah. Uh, code can do it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm reconsidering. I'm reconsidering how I unwrap this. So, because I want to get the face, so I'm gonna unwrap it from here. I want the face to be on its own. Uh, like have its own, like, like pretty much really smooth if that makes sense so i can just like paint like a cool face there without worrying about any seams and then i can just cut this in half yeah that should be fine yeah it works this should be okay it might do it might be a little bit stretching but it's fine i'm not worried about it it's just a demo and then in here this is pretty simple just cut this in half and then done <laughs> okay um then you're done, and then you just hit uh, unwrap. And then bam, it shows you the checkerboard. It looks fine, right? Looks like life is going to be okay. Like you, like I said, there's going to be some stretching, but like they did a pretty good job. And you can move this stuff around if you want, but uh, I don't care. Okay, and then we can do this. All right, and so we're in layers. So there's two layers that are already given to you. Layer zero is pretty much the model, right? And then layer one is empty. There's nothing on that one, okay? So far so good, right? So you can just do something like this where uh, you could just start filling in the stuff. So let's say uh, I want to start to fill, and I only have the, like if you look at these three different orbs, you turn off the normal map and turn off the uh, reflection or the glossiness channel. Only You're only going to be dealing with color, pretty much, right? And uh, I got the fill bucket tool selected, and let's say I'm going to make like some sort of cool purple monkey design, right? And because these are all different groups, you can just literally click on them and they fill bucket that whole group, right? So if you want the ears to be a different color, you can do that. You want the, the neck for whatever reason to be lighter color. You know, V is to color pick, so you can kind of get that color back in there. But this is hand painted, so we might not even be dealing with um, the shading, right? The lighting. So I have on hand paint mode right now already default. But you also need to do is you need to turn on flat shade, which I have a hotkey for. All right, so you just do that. So now it's just literally, you know, there's no lighting at all, right? Because a lot of the stuff you have to hand paint anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it, 
the, the thing with that is it can be pretty hard to see what you're doing because it's so flat. You know what I mean? If you have your your model right now, it's pretty simple. But if you have uh, a more complex model, it can be really challenging to see what's going on. Oh yeah, that's fine. Then don't don't make it challenging. There's a wireframe. You can turn the wireframe on to help yourself see it better. Oh yeah. Right. Um, you can draw landmarks. You can leave the flat shade in, but let it be known. Uh, whatever strategy you use, uh, you know some people use the uh, because they'll have a little bit more detail. So they'll bake it. So if you go to textures, you can do texture baking tool, right? Yeah. And then you to just... bake the ambient occlusion, for example. Yes. So you go textures, uh, calculate uh, occlusion, I mean, not texture baking tool. And then yeah, you just could go sphere, or you can do hemisphere, or hemisphere and hemisphere. Hemisphere is like if it's like a light coming from above, down. You can do both if you want. You hit OK. And then bam, it adds some sense of uh, lighting. And see, it kind of broke, right? But this is pretty common whenever you bake the, for the first time. So all you got to do is just save the file, right? Let's call it test one, and then just reopen it, and then it'll it'll fix it. I don't know why it does that, but it does. So, so basically, there is no lighting, right? All right. Like, there's no lighting, but, you have the, but the occlusion makes it the illusion of lighting exactly. Uh -huh. So then, that's, that's also easier to work with, if that makes sense, right? And you have it on its own layer, so you can turn it down. Like, if you feel like it's too intense, you can turn it down like 50. But here's the, here's the here's the big thing, because you were talking about Photoshop, right? You know, I wish Photoshop had better 3D painting you know it actually does if you have a powerful machine but most people don't <laughs> okay so yeah they have a powerful the... machine but the thing is it's crash all the time yeah it's, yeah it's, it's not reliable i get you so there's a yeah. there's a mode where it says edit projections and exterior editor i have a hotkey for it but you do this and bam look what it did it brought it into photoshop right oh boy <laughs> and then layer one, layer zero, ambient occlusion, like all the layers, yeah, all the layers that were in 3D code, right? Except for light map. Light map is just, you know, it's just there to, to know to teach you what the lighting is, right? But look, you can make layer two. I'm gonna name it. I'm gonna call it Max. Isn't this? No, I'm gonna call it Max. I'm gonna call it layer Max. I'm not gonna get too intense. And then you can come in here, and then you can start to to paint. Let's say like whatever you want. I think you already have a clue what's about to happen. Yeah, I think you already know what's about to happen, right? And you can probably yeah. start to see why people love themselves some 3D code. And you can flip it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, you can go in here and you can like I flipped the canvas, but I'm gonna flip it back so it doesn't get all it doesn't break on my on me. Purple monkey. Let's give him some lips. You know, you, there's only so much you can do, though. You have to change the angle, obviously, eventually. But I just wanted to show you, like, why you got to spend at least more than like a second in 3D code. To really understand the, the power of it, and just drawing this like kind of weird <laughs> character, it's fine. All right, Max, are you there still? Yeah, I'm drinking the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just putting some color there. Um, just painting this a little bit better. Hey guys, sorry for the delay. No, it's all good. We're doing some 3D yeah. stuff. Teaching Max that there's a whole new world out there. Blowing his mind. Actually, most people <laughs> thought initially. Huh? This look more easy than I thought initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all... Uh, 
Yeah, it's all a matter of just trying stuff out. Okay, so let's let's say this is good. I, I spent too much time. Okay, so this is the original position, right? So hit Control S. That's all. I'm saved it, right? That's all I did. Go back to 3D code. Look what happened. Pretty amazing, nice. right? It is great. Yeah, I mean this this model doesn't have you know indentation of like the face and nose obviously, right? I can't take advantage of like depth, right? Uh, but I mean a lot of low poly stuff works this way anyway, right? Like especially if the characters are tiny, you know they don't waste their time with polygons that are super, like they don't waste their time with that much extra polygons, you know? And then you just and I turn off the uh, for for. Uh, I turn off perspective, which you just press the numpad five, not number five, but numpad five, like on a number pad. Yeah, yeah, I got you. And then I just press my hotkey, which is Control Alt P, and then I say yes, update, and then turn off the light map, and then let's go back to max layer, or you can make another layer. I actually be really cautious with this, this type of stuff, so I make another layer usually for every like time I add new features. Would you say sooner? And then I hit Control S, right? So then it's saved, and then bam. And obviously, you can just come in here, and like press V. Whoops. So I press V on this. Gotta turn up the opacity. Whoops, I'm on the wrong layer. Turn up the opacity to 100%, and paint it in there. See? Yeah. Like by hand. And then I can like now like press V, and if you hold sh uh, Shift or Smooth and Smooth, in this instance it's not smoothing as well as I would like it to. Oh, I'm not on the right there. That's why. There you go. So smoothing as a good blending tool. Right. You get it? Yeah, I get it. And you get some good hand painting going on, brother. And then you just got to learn. V is the hockey for color picking, and then shift is the smooth. And it just, it's like sort of some sort of nirvana in terms of painting. Are you smoothing the painting or the, or the, yeah. the, the, geometry, the geometry? No, the, we're, we're beyond the geometry. We're only painting, yeah. So I'm smoothing the painting part. <laughs> so you see, see what I'm trying to get at, though, Max? Hopefully this demo yeah. opens okay. your eyes. Yeah. And you'll have a lot of fun with it, man. It's, like, really fun. You know? It's, like, really a lot of fun to do stuff in 3D code plus whatever. I like, like I love Scylla because I can pump out, like, a really trash... 3D model, <laughs> you know, and then just uh, like really low poly. Like I get real, I can get real low poly. Uh, I was planning on to get better at this tool. I was planning on doing a bunch of um, studies um, in the in the form of like taking famous scenes from movies and just make really low poly versions of them. It's an idea that I have. I'm not sure if I'll follow through with it, but it's a way for me to learn. And the kind of yeah. low poly stuff that I wanted to do was something like along these lines, like super. Love Holly. This this they're like way efficient though. Look at how they unwrap this stuff. It's like crazy like Yeah. Um I don't know That's if I'll really nice. yeah, I don't know if I'll get that that level of perfection. My my low poly stuff might yeah, look more. I, I, I know what to do it's in Blender. I guess you can do the same in, in three code. But it's like really brain intensive to figure figure out how to unwrap your model to match uh, the most space and the texture. Yeah, um, so 3D Coat just does a really good job of unwrapping that. And when you take it to other software, it just works. So that's why I don't really worry about it. I just I just don't. So this is a really cool model to look at, like how it's like low poly. Like this is the kind of polygon that I think WoW is at. I think they're at about 
5,000, 6,000 now. I think they used to be like a 1,500 polys for their whole character, yeah. right? Which is really low, but now they're at like 5,000, which is much higher, which I think something like this is more along the lines of that, you know? Where you you would do, you'd actually do model out the little bevels and the little uh, cuts of the armor, you know what I mean? Yeah, I can check on... Uh, I've got a program somewhere to export a model from uh, Warcraft. So I can check out. Yeah, the, I mean, even even without that, you can just look. I think there's like risk references of them. You don't have to like. Yeah, I appreciate that effort, but you might not even have to go that far. <laughs> you know, you can just probably just type in Warcraft models, Warcraft models, and just probably find something within a short amount of time. Oh, I should put World of Warcraft. Oh, I already see one. Like here's like old ones right here, right? Like yeah, this is yeah. real low. <laughs> this is this is like not the new ones. The new ones are like right here. Like this is the old one to the new one. You can tell they like, add a little bit more polygons there, right? Yeah. And there's the textures. Yeah. The textures are just a lot. The the textures is a lot more to the textures, right? You can see right here this image of like the old versions. Like you can see every polygon with this. And it's harder. Yeah, you can tell they model out uh, the features. I think this is a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. World of Warcraft was starting to get really old in terms of graphics. Yeah. But they're, they're really efficient about how they're doing their characters. They really are. Um, yeah. And so what I'm saying is, like, look at kind of what they got. Try to, like, level it up. Um, do your own versions of it. and trying to match the style and what I'm trying to say is like there's no reason to to be curious or mysterious about where how it's done like just look you can see great examples of it yeah, that's great like I said I'm trying to go even lower than that it's like the, sim the equivalent to like pixel art like stuff like this it's like really appealing to me you know like these super cute um, really low poly characters are probably less than a few hundred polygons. Like this is definitely lower than three thousand or a thousand. You know. Yeah. But it's like really good. Like I think this person is doing something that I should actually consider <laughs> to try to do a better job of. Like this is super low because I'm trying to build a game um, for my kids, and I did like a little model. Uh, that I thought was cute, but then I'm thinking I can probably go even lower. You know, because these kids play Roblox. Have you seen this game? No, I don't know it. Yeah, these kids play like Roblox, which is kind of like... I really... play Minecraft Ripoff. Yeah, it's like really crappy. <laughs> it's like really crappy. Oh, but man. they love it. They love it, you know? And um, yeah, Minecraft actually is newer than Roblox. Roblox goes back further than Minecraft. It's just Minecraft just has a little bit better of aesthetic, you know, and it's, it's it's more unified or uniform of aesthetic. And it just is kind of a better game. That's why I think Minecraft picked up more than Roblox. Roblox is actually quite popular too. It's pretty fucking popular. Um, especially with amongst kids. But I'm like looking at this stuff and I'm like, this is like total garbage. <laughs> yeah, you <know>, like I don't <laughs> like it at all. <laughs> I'd rather have them play Minecraft. They love playing Minecraft. So I was like, I want to make my own like a game that's like this, but the kids can actually be proud of playing. <laughs> you know, they're not like embarrassed by when they get older. Something like what you see here, what's happening with like you know Mass Effect, and this is really cool. So I was gonna like take some, because like, I've been watching Game of Thrones. I've been loving it. So I was gonna take like famous scenes, like the Red Wedding. And just do it all low poly, yeah. <laughs> and just have all the characters like murdered, but they're like cute little characters being murdered, you know. And then just get in the habit of like pumping out a really fast workflow. But yeah, you can tell like this is pretty quick, already. All right. Yeah, I, sh I would definitely try that. <laughs> yep. Get into it. Alright, I haven't drawn a monstrous thing in a while.
So it's time to do it. If you guys have any uh, questions, by the way, by all means, ask away. No, no question. What are you guys going to do for the holidays? Uh, probably it's eating a lot. A lot. Whoa, 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 one at a time. <laughs> Max was first. What are you saying? Uh, I'm French, so I will eat a lot. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Stop being racist to yourself. To, yeah, that's true, man. To be more accurate, us Americans eat the most. We're like amongst yeah, the baddest probably. people. <laughs> you, don't yeah, yeah, you can't argue about. That. Yeah, we're we're fat. We're a fat bunch. Yeah, you guys eat uh, better food for sure. I think your food's definitely really really good. And uh, our food is good, but in all the wrong ways. Like it's like you know, just like tons. Yeah, of, you you tons eat of... too much meat. Yeah, I mean American in general. You oh, dude, we do, dude. That's why I don't eat it at all anymore. I pretty much abandoned uh, meat entirely. Ah, uh, yeah, you're vegan. Yeah, I am. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I looked into that, but I'm not totally convinced yet. Oh, I can give it to you. But... <laughs> uh, but you, you. Do you take some uh, complementary vitamin or something? No. B12? No. Um, uh, you need to. <laughs> what about amino no, acids? I don't, I don't need it. Because I have fortified foods, like uh, the milks that I drink have it fortified in it. So two cups of uh, oh, right. almond milk okay. has all the B12 I need. And by the way, uh, uh, yeah, supplementing B12 is better than getting it from uh, animal proteins. Because uh, you know, animals don't produce B12. We supplement the animals with B12 so that we can get it in their meat. And the reason why we don't have B12 naturally on plants is because we have really good um, agriculture and uh, really clean water, at least uh, more modern and third or first world countries, right? Right. And because uh, B12 is commonly found in like plants and uh, root plants, like because it's just found in bacteria. But once you clean it, then it's gone, right? So yeah, you absolutely, you're right. You have to get it somehow, right? So I just get it in my milk. So I have every every morning I have my cereal, and it's two cups. So I'm I'm good. <laughs> I'm good for the whole day. Oh, okay. And if uh, if you need to supplement, like if you don't drink milk, whatever, uh, or you don't take on milk like that, then you uh, what you need to do is just get like a like a yeah like a package of supplements, right? And uh, get like the 2,800 milligrams, whatever it is, um, and you just take once a week. And then it's like thirty dollars a year, pretty much, because you only have to buy like two bottles, and you're good. Super easy, super easy to supplement. It's not really hard to find. And it's, if it's even in cereals too, you might not even realize. You know, so there's, uh, some breads have it. So, anyway, uh, someone else was gonna say what they're gonna do this holiday weekend. What were you gonna say? Yeah, I was saying that I was going to. Like draw all the time and maybe okay. create some high quality 3D model. <laughs> That's my plans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really highly recommend getting into 3D code because it is just kind of fun just to paint like your own little character. Have you tried yeah, Substance I'm Painter? Uh, I have. Substance Painter to me is just a little too um, heavy. There's a lot you could do with it. It's kind of like how I feel about ZBrush. Like, I love ZBrush. But the interface is just so... I feel like it gets in the way more than it helps. Like, uh, I think it's it's on the contrary. It's pretty simple and very similar to Photoshop. What, uh, Substance Painter? Yeah, the interface is pretty, pretty similar. No, nah, dude. Like, I have Substance Painter. Like, I can get Photoshop to be like this and be absolutely fine and paint the whole thing. Can you do the same with Substance Painter? Like this? Yeah, like probably. with no interface? Not probably not. Absolutely not. You'd have to use the interface to get like anything done. And that's what that's why I mean by it feels heavy. Three D code has like but a pretty complicated you, 
uh, 3D code Thank has you pick up. Go ahead, right. sorry, there's a delay. Go, go no, you go. All right, so I guess if you if you pick up a brush in Substance Painter and uh, and select a layer, you could do the same with, with just the just the main screen. It's about you know Substance Painter is mostly about dropping in like um, complex materials on yeah. different different parts. Yeah, I guess that's the pro point I'm trying to make. Is like I don't want to. I feel like I'm just uh, turning knobs on a machine, right? And well, you kind of have to do it to get a, like a really realistic uh, effect. Oh yeah, I get it, man. It might not it might not be useful for like the uh, blizzard, uh, blizzard style, which is like yeah. re which really looks hand painted, but yeah. for other games. Yeah, for PBL. Yeah, you could. Oh. I used three yeah, is good stuff. Yeah, I used three D coat because you can just hand paint your uh, materials too. The three D coat does a really good job. Of PBR. Um, are you still using ZBrush then? Uh, I still use ZBrush. I just uh, only or do organic sculpts mostly, because uh, you don't have to really touch the interface for that either. Because think about like paper and pencil, right? Like if you're in a paper pencil, you don't really use a lot of the um what. Oh, is it this one here? Oh, this is a really good airbrush. I'm going to save this one. Um, airbrush noise. So, if you go, because I just got out of 3D Coat, so I don't want to jump back in <laughs> and just do a demonstration of like how awesome their PBR is. Um, and it's only getting better. But like with ZBrush, what I really love about ZBrush is that organic sculpts, like, yeah, you can pretty much not worry about it because. Like paper and pencil, you don't worry about the interface, right? You just draw or pen and paper, right? And to, to stay creative, it's really important to, to kind of do that. And if you're trying to be like a, an accomplished 3D artist, by all means, you have to use stuff like Substance Painter or Mari, these really amazing, you know, um, tools to make very realistic looking things, right? Because it's using a lot of like computer power and computation that, you know, we're just not that good at as humans, right? Uh, at least most of us aren't. But then as soon as you start to try to be creative with it, like if you want to like make any kind of creative changes, the interface just gets in your way, man. It just does. Okay? Right? And uh, that's kind of the point I'm trying to make. It's just like uh, a lot of the, the stuff is not hotkey based in the way that I like. And I realized, because I was using Substance, and I was just, like, blown away with, like, how realistic I can get something to look. Right? It just felt... Uh, it just okay, felt... okay, because I, I actually, actually just, got, just got 3D code, and it's part of the New Year's resolution to make it part of my work code for next year. Yeah, so 3D code, in terms of design, is just one of the greatest tools ever, man. It just is. Um, especially for hard surface. Absolutely for hard surface. Like, this is just so, so good. Um, and some people don't realize it yet, but it just is. It's just so good. Um, like, if you look, but I, my buddy, his name is Fod. He's been, uh, he's been, uh, uh, I saw Jama, I think Jama's been alive. He was the one that was saying that you could do pretty much anything with 3D code, that it just blew the competition out of the water. Yeah. Absolutely, you can do some crazy stuff with 3D coat, uh, almost anything. But I think hard surface is where it's king. I don't think, like organic, is, I still believe ZBrush is just better. Um, oh, I know, but, I know this guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, he's in, he's in our Discord too. He hangs out with us, so he does all this in 3D coat, and he does it really quickly. You know, like in less than an hour, I believe. Right, he's like he's been killing it. He just keeps using it and keeps getting better at it. Can you see his workflow anywhere? Does he upload this? Yeah, he has some videos of him doing it. I just just go to his Facebook and check it out. Um, but pretty much. I think he has a, a gum road. I think. Oh yeah, that's right. He has a few gum roads too. Yeah, there you go. But like, uh, you know, let's get into 3D code for just a second, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Again, I'm not gonna get too too uh, into it because I want to paint. Um, 
So you can like everything's just super hacky. Like there's an interface in the way, but I can get rid of it if I need, or I don't know how to actually get rid of it. Like hide it like I can in Photoshop. But I, as far as I'm concerned, it's it's not necessary, right? Like I don't need to look at it. You understand what I'm trying to say? And I can come in here and just basically only use hotkeys. And start coming up with a pretty good workflow. And I can come in here and do some stuff like this. Right? Here's a really cool thing that you can do in 3D Coat that I, I just don't understand why ZBrush can't do it yet. Which, um, for one, the lasso selection is just freaking phenomenal. Like using a polygonal lasso tool. It's just like clearly a win for hard surface design. <laughs> right? But like this is what you can do. You can change the material. Right? It's pretty easy. And you're like, well, you can do that in and ZBrush, right? You can just change the material that you want. Yeah, sure. But can you do this? Where you can split a different part of it, like that? And see how the material is different, but the other one did not change? Uh, by the way, to do that, I discover a way, which is amazing with uh, to record, is to use Vox Hide. Oh, yeah, Vox Hide is perfect. Stuff, um, yeah. Add it back. Yeah, I use that all the time. Some bubble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this blew my mind. Yeah, you can do stuff like this. And I believe I have a... Uh, what is the hockey that I made for this? Or I, yeah, I you just can add it back. This yeah, I made a hockey for it. Yeah, this one. It's and then crazy. you can change the material of that. And then I think I have to do that. Yeah, there you go. Right? Bam, hard surface thing, right? So check it out. You can do this where we can make a new layer. I'm going to call it low. And then, uh, what was the hockey? I haven't used this in merge visible. So M. So there you go. So I got like a, a low poly version now. And then I got, let's bring it down to 2500. Hold on to your butts. Let's see if this works. I should have lowered it more before I did this. It might not work. Oh, yeah. Actually, I did a reasonable job. I don't like it, though. Let's try again. There you go. And then now, let's do it. Let's go 3,500. Z-Remesher is better than Auto Topo, but I know they're still working on it, so I'm going to I'm gonna wait it out. But I guess you can do it. Uh, there you go. That's fine. Not automatically if you need something precise. Mm -hmm. You can you can hand do it. Yeah. Fair. So bring in this three. Let's bake it in. Doesn't seem. Okay. No occlusion. Uh, let's do 2048. Let's do auto mapping. You could mark the seams and stuff if you wanted here, but I just don't want to. I'll just go ahead and hide all this. Go to paint room. And now we're ready to paint on top of the surface. Right? And it has some PBR already on it. Right? And you can change the environments to your fancy. Right, I like this one. And then you can just, I mean, turn off these things. And start painting. 
And it just feels better. Right? That's in, in terms of substance painter, man. Like, I just don't feel this way whenever I paint a substance painter. It's not this fast either. It doesn't feel this quick. And then you can uh, do some fun stuff like this. Bink. <laughs> Just big old. Here, let's try on a color. Bink, bink. Bink, bink, bink. Which is actually really good for like, you know, little bolts and stuff. Because it's all normal map, so it's being affected by the lighting. <laughs> It's all pretty quick, and it doesn't drag at all. And you can do the, you can do smart materials too, like the kind of stuff that, um, what you call it, um, uh, Substance does. The Substance is really good though. Substance has um, like this thing that I really like, where it 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 pretends to use wear and tear or weathering, you know, which is really good. It's a really cool thing. It like simulates this stuff. 3D code doesn't have that yet. Yeah, but you can pretty much do everything and anything in 3D code. Really, you can. Even organic stuff. Uh, now, does organic stuff look as good as ZBrush? Yeah, you can totally get it to look as good. Uh, even better, I think. But, like, there's something about Z Like, ZBrush has been their whole effort to making, like, one of the most premier sculpting softwares and i know specifically for like um sort of for more organic stuff like they really nailed that you know so that's why i think it's better it just performs better even in some instances you know so uh, i don't mind just jumping back and forth from different software right and plus i already invested in zbrush long ago so it's not like i'm just gonna stop using it anytime soon And uh, a good way of thinking about tools, too, because I have Substance Painter as well. I just don't use it ever since I got 3D Coat. I just don't. Um, the reason why different tools have good to have, like, a good assortment of different tools is very similar to the idea of, like, you know, when you're building something, you don't necessarily, in real life, you don't necessarily only use a screwdriver to put together, like, a bike, right? You have these, like, an Allen wrench, a regular wrench, screwdrivers, you know, like all kinds of stuff to build uh, one type of thing. And so it doesn't make sense for me to only use like one software, especially in 3D where it's very technical, right? Uh, and I had a friend who kind of explained it to me. He's like, he's like, what's better to use only one software that may take you three hours to do something, right? But you feel comfortable in it or use five different softwares and you get it done in an hour. Right? And I was like, that's actually a good point. So if you need to jump between the you know, Substance Painter and ZBrush and uh, 3D Coat to a Blender or Maya, whatever, uh, but you have a really powerful workflow that you really invented around this, you know, then by all means do it, you know, keep doing it. Like the result is really what it comes down to and the result's great, then don't worry, don't stress. Any other questions? I think I'll take a short break, get some water, and then come back. We got a five minute restroom break too. If you guys need to use the restroom. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Hold on, let me just make this a little bit more disturbing. And I'll try to think of some questions by the time we get back. Yeah. Um, hey guys, I gotta go actually. So uh, I'll okay. see you later. And yeah, man. No big deal. Awesome. Yeah. Happy holidays. And yeah, absolutely.
Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Happy holidays. Alright, I'll see you guys in like a few minutes. Alright, I'm back. Oh, where did I put my water? Oh, there it is. Went and got water and misplaced it. It's right next to me. Sweetheart, I'm in class right now, Mamas. Alright, any questions? Uh, did you have any kind of concept art mentor? No. I did not. I had a lot of great teachers here and there, but no one that just kind of that guided me through anything specifically, no. But I learned a lot from just just observation and a lot of practice. Can you guys close the door, please? Love you guys. But close that door. Thank you, Boo Boo. Love you. Um, anyway, no, I didn't really, nope, I did not, yeah, I, um, one of the, no, not necessarily, I don't really believe that there's, um, you know, there's this idea of self-taught and not self-taught, I don't really think that's a thing, like, I understand the premise, right? Like, you didn't really go to, like, formal, like, you didn't have, like, a formal school or education or even maybe a formal teacher, right? Uh, but you had to learn from somebody or something, right? So self-taught only just means, um, like, motivated learning, pretty much, right? Like, self-motivated learning. That's probably a better way of thinking about it because... Uh, when you go to school or when you take like a mentorship like mine, like it's it's self motivated, but there's an agenda that is external because I'm supplying that self motivation, right? Um, so I didn't I didn't have like a teacher that did that for me. I just made my own agenda, right? But it wasn't like I taught like I didn't have any resources. I just taught myself everything, <laughs> right? I was just as clueless as you guys at a lot of things, you know. Uh, the advantage you guys have is that you have me. That I'm just telling you to not do things <laughs> or do things, right? And if you trust my insight, uh, you'll get to where I'm at faster than it took me to get there. Does that make sense? So for a lot of you guys improved dramatically in this last month, you know? Uh, something like what you guys did to improve would have probably took me a year just because I had to learn it on my own. I had to like constantly trial and error. And I was like, oh, that's why I suck. Or I go to an event and I show my portfolio to somebody and they're like, oh, this is why you suck. And I'm like, oh, I didn't see that before because, you know, like, you know, I didn't, I couldn't teach myself that, you know? It wasn't like I could self-teach. It's just like a, a matter of just constant error until, like, something reveals itself as a problem. And then that then guides me to go look for the answer, whether it's in another person or whether I just look at another person's artwork and see if I can get answers there. Because I'll look at other people's artwork constantly. Um, you know, I, I, would, uh, I was talking to a student a long time ago and I was giving him advice. I'm like, you know, you should learn how to paint like Phil Hale. Like, this is kind of how he goes about painting. And then my student was just like, well, how do you know that? He was like, have you ever seen him paint? And I was like, no, nah, never. And so, well, then how the hell do you know how he paints? Like, I don't believe that that's how he paints if you don't, if you've never seen it. And I was like, are you serious? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, are you, are you a religious person? And he was like, uh, no, not really. And I was like, so, so you understand the concept of just because you don't see something doesn't mean that it's not true, right? And um, he's like, yeah. And I was like, okay, so he's like, how do you think scientists make rockets that can land on Mars? Like, how do you think uh, medical nutritionists know, like, the, the right formula to make healthier people? You know, how do you think people, like, how do you think Einstein came up with the theory of relativity if he never saw it? Right? And he was just, like, by, like, investigating and being scientists and studying. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's what I did, just with art. Right? I was like, yeah, I didn't see him paint, but I would look at his sketches and say, ah, oh, there's a clue there, right? 
I see how he's starting his painting. There's, it's like an archaeologist, but with art, right? And then I see like a half-done painting, and I'm like, oh, I, can, I get how uh, he's doing that now, right? And then I saw a full painting, and then now it's starting to become very clear to me, right? And then it's like not just looking at his work, I would look at other artwork, artwork that he was influenced by, right? And then I'll just constantly investigate and investigate until I started to come up with a hypothesis, and I tested that hypothesis, and I had a clear uh, idea of how he goes about his paintings, and that's what I see, and that's what I do in my own paintings. And he's like, oh, I, I'm convinced now. I get what you're saying. So yeah, so when you want to study, don't always rely on the fact that you need someone to show you how to do it, because that might almost not always happen, you know? And so um, that's what self-teaching was like for me. It wasn't so much that I taught myself how to do this stuff. It was that I like, um, just was really ambitious about looking for the answers. Uh, I was more like an archaeologist digging up answers that were already there. Right? Like my painting style isn't you know, very unique, actually. It's just a, a more advanced version of an already existing painting style, which is chiaroscuro, is using the light of dark, light and dark shapes to basically paint your whole painting right that's all i do and i didn't invent that that was invented in the renaissance you know people like cavaggio were like masters of this painting style right mm -hmm. i just adopted it and put it in photoshop you know like i didn't self teach myself how to do creature scroll i just looked at what the masters did and it adopted what I found was great. Found some more modern versions of this, like Sargent, Jeremy Geddes, Phil Hale, right? Found digital modern versions of this, you know, like people like Charlie Wynn, Ryan Minerding. And then just said, okay, these are my teachers, even though they don't know that they're teaching me. <laughs> you know? Like these people are teaching me, but they have no clue who I am and what I'm doing. Right? And it takes, that's, like, that takes so much longer, obviously to do it that way right but not as long as it would have if i didn't have those people at all like if i didn't have access to that information right that's even longer just like shooting in the dark that's why if you look at like the history of like artwork that was done back in the like, you know prehistoric age is like pretty simple like people just drew like buffaloes and like um trees you know things that they knew <laughs> right and then you start getting to people start inventing religion and societal differences and beliefs and some people started creating story right and mythology right so then you start having like egyptian art and greek art where it starts saying what if people had the head of a lion bro you know what would that be about right so you get in like early stages of concept art <laughs> and then as as like technology gets advanced and you have like markers and oil painting and transportation and all these things that allow um things of transfer like modern television and radio you can look at like the old versions of what things were perceived like look at old robots they're pretty simple right the design aesthetics yeah, really right. really basic but now yeah, look at robots yeah, yeah yeah exactly and now look at robots right it's like there's an endless amount of what robots can look like you know and it's because, you know, we're just piggybacking off of the last people, the last pioneers of design, you know? And so self-taught is not a real thing. Like, I don't think there's somebody that's never been exposed to any information that all of a sudden can draw like me, right? Like, I don't think they can just all of a sudden, like, without looking or realizing. Uh, and if they can, that's very rare, and they might have some sort of um, savantness to them, you know? But what I'm trying to say is it's a rarity. You don't, it's not common, okay? Um, but for the rest of you, uh, like, yeah, if, if you're looking to, to get better on your own, then you have to have that self-discipline of just, like, constantly digging and looking for answers. Uh, and you guys are living in a good time where a lot of that is easier, even easier than it was before, right? And um, I know because I'm taking advantage of it, too. You know, I'm like, dude, this person has a gum road. I'm going to watch this, you know, or this person has an online class. I'm going to take that. Right. It's only getting better and better education uh, or the access to education. I was talking to uh, my employer yesterday about stuff like this, and he was talking to me about how he was going to school to learn some game design and stuff. Right. 
and then he said he took one class on like a hundred dollar course on uh, Edami or Udemy. It's like an online education platform. Udemy, Udemy. Uh, Udemy, right? Something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. He something like he took that uh, course on there. He said it was like a hundred dollars, and he said he learned so much from that one course than he did like in like the year that he was in school, university. And I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. You know, my son, uh, I'm trying to get him inspired. And I told him, like, you know, he's like, what do you want to do? And he's like, I want to do something with video games. I said, well, you love music and you love video games. Why don't you do stuff for, like, uh, video game music? You know? And he was just like, that does, that does sound pretty cool. And I was all, you know, the, the Dead Mouse, the, the, the house or the electronica DJ, right? Like, he has a class. He has a master class online for, like, I think $100. Right. I'm not sure if you guys seen this, but um, there's like a more yeah, like teaching writing for television. What? Anyway, yeah, Chef Ramsay now. Yeah, see, so ninety bucks and you learn from Dead Mouse, and it's like this five hours worth of instructional content, and it's like twenty three different lessons, you know, of him teaching you how to do what he does. <laughs> which is like, are you kidding me? That's so cool. My brother-in-law took the Hans Zimmer class. And yeah. Like, what? Yeah, there's a Hans, <laughs> there's a Hans Zimmer class too. I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll sign you up for both of that. It's like 180 bucks, <laughs> you know? And he's like, oh, okay, great. So I, I just want him to get in the habit of something else first. Like I have him doing something else. And then once he starts doing that, then I was like, okay, now we'll move on to building on to this, you know? Because right now he's really uninspired. And so I'm trying to get him to get inspired. And the thing has a lot to do with just, he's he's very lucky. He has a lot of um, fortune in his life. Uh, he needs a little bit more misfortune. Right? But I don't necessarily want to give him that either. I just want to just to kind of have the, the foresight to not look for misfortune. Because a little bit of bad luck makes you work a little bit better. You know? It just does. I don't want him. To, I don't want to have to have that happen to him. But I'm kind of me and my wife are really unsure what to do. He's a teenager too, man. Like so, it's like, and I'm his dad, so it's like harder for him to like listen to me. <laughs> Even though this is like what I do for a living, you know. And like a lot of people respect my uh, my opinions and my uh, my guidance. Like he's like, whatever, dad. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, don't you get it? I'm trying to help you become successful. Um. But I think he's starting to come around because he's starting to see all his friends doing really well and then some of them are starting to come around to graduating, you know? And, like, he's still, like, not doing anything. And it's start I think that's starting to affect him. But my point is, is, like, education. I was telling him, I was like, dude, there's, like, education everywhere for everything, you know? Like, literally for everything. Like, and so, yeah, like, take advantage of that. That's what I'm trying to get at. Especially if you guys are ending your class and you're not going to take another course for a little bit, like then just uh, you know, go online, find resources that are more accessible and available for you, and kick some butt. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, the, the, the good side of these mentorships is that you can actually get critiques from someone that you, whose skills you value. Yeah. As opposed I, to that, that tutorials. Yeah, I was telling um, I was telling one student about this because they were talking. We were talking about school too, and they're asking me like, what, what, why do I have such reservations about the education system? And I said, well, it's not so much that I think education system is. Um, I don't think education is bad, obviously. It's just the way that it's structured right now for, for a lot of public schools is bad. And a lot of it's because they're, they're, they're really mainly driven by money. You know, like, don't get me wrong. Like, uh, I definitely need to make money to, to successfully keep running this school, right? But uh, I'm not driven primarily by money, right? I'm driven mostly by making sure that you guys are awesome, right? And I explained this, like, and this is, here's a really good clue to, to know the kind of quality education you're getting. Here's a really good test you can do, okay? So, like, from your teacher. Ask yourself, if can that teacher be replaced? Can that teacher – like, could you swap out another teacher, right? 
and they can teach the same lessons and teach the same thing just as well, right? And if the answer is yes, then maybe you don't have the best of, of classes or maybe you're not going to the best of schools. Do you understand? Like if a substitute teacher can come in and there's no difference in terms of the quality of education, then maybe you're not getting the quality of education that you thought you were getting, right? So could you imagine that? Like could you imagine if I um, – if I like had a substitute teacher, right, come in, like you just can't imagine that, right? If I can't teach that day, uh, we have to cancel class, right? There's no, yeah, I can't like, oh yeah, I'll just have to, you know, step in. He's just gonna put a, he's gonna put on a movie, and you guys just watch the movie for the class, <laughs> right? Like no, it's, it's like you need me here to help uh, give the guidance, and it's it's true for many teachers. Like that's why people are like. You know, they're, the Gumroad stuff. They're like, don't you? Aren't you afraid? Like all these other people are coming in and they're doing like videos, of, like how to do character design too. And like, don't you feel like they're taking away from the market, that your market? And I was like, no, because you're 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 thinking that all of us are the same, right? And all of what we have to teach is the same. And I was like, that's the problem. Is like, just because someone takes my class doesn't mean that they can't take someone else's class, right? Like, doesn't mean that they're done. It just means that they learned a lot from what I have to offer, and then when they go to take, like, let's say, John Park, and let's say he has a character class, John Park will have different insight that will be equally uh, as valued as my class, even though it's, it's the same name, right? It doesn't matter because he's a different artist, and he has different um, he has a different philosophy on a lot of what he thinks makes good art. Right, and what makes what's why that benefits the student is that you then start to collect more and more data on what makes good character design, right? You're not only just getting it from one source; you're getting it from multiple sources. So that's why it's it's very valued to kind of do that. You know, you don't become monochromatic to what you what your education is offering you. And so, um, yeah, I, I highly recommend people learning from you know instructors that. Like you said, you value their their skill, their their insight. You know, because yeah, if you just want to get good at drawing and you just want to take an art class, like you could just go do that, right? But it doesn't mean you're going to be the next greatest concept artist. You, you're going to find out right away there's more to it than that. Like most of you guys have already figured it out. Great question. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the good side of the uh, private um, private education system, is that when people are kind of bad teachers, that they can get fired. They are not just uh, they don't just get jobs out of I don't know. Maybe they have some friends in the uh, uh, you know. Maybe the uh, the chairman is their friend or. Anything, right? Yeah. Because all of my college professors were kind of random. I didn't even know who they were. And they they were like guys who uh, who just were there, and no one wanted to take their classes, but uh, they had to <laughs> they had to go to them because uh, they as they part of the curriculum like a specified amount of students. So they yeah, were like doing so selection. stupid. Yeah, it's like it's it's clearly not guided to make it better for the actual students. That's the problem that I have for it. Like, like, why are you putting students in classes that they don't want, and more importantly, they don't need, right? It's like they need it maybe to get credits, but like, why do they need credits, right? Like, at the end of the day, most employers aren't saying like, well, let me look at your college degree and see how many credits you got. Let, let me look at your grades. You know, they, they're looking for, um, they're looking for the experience, the, the ability to provide the kind of work that they are looking to hire you for, you know, uh, in America specifically we're running into the problem of, because people complain, like a lot of students are complaining that school is too hard. And so it's getting easier and easier specifically in, here in the States. And then students are becoming worse and worse. So when they start getting these jobs, um, certain things are just, they're not adequate workers, right? 
and then they complain about their work, but then it's like, it's different. It's not school, you know. Uh, that's why I don't give out grades, right, or do anything of that nature, like a point system. No, I just focus on improvement. That's my main goal. If I see improvement, then I praise it. I praise the improvement, right? Um, and I discourage anything that will prevent that, right? And so mm -hmm. why that's helpful is that it, it motivates you guys. It gives you the, the self-confidence that's really helpful to keep you working harder, right? And and the reality is like when you get a job, you know, the boss is not going to be like, oh, you know, you only got a C on this, this project that we're working on, you know? It's okay. Next time, try to do better. No, you get usually you'll get fired <laughs> if you do average work. They'll be like, "Oh, this is average work. Do it, do it again." You know, like what's wrong with you? Like we need it to be better than this. Why is it so bad? Like do it again. And if you don't do a good job, then they'll, they'll yeah, they'll fire you, right? You can't get away with like um, average work in some jobs, you know. And a lot of these schools kind of will allow you to pass with average work. So you get a, an average diploma and then you get an average career, right? If you get, if you're lucky enough to get one at all, because the people that are going to get jobs are the ones that are providing quality work, right? Yeah, but most uh, employers still still do look for uh, decent diplomas, right? No, not at all. Not in um, not in our field, especially. I would say our... concept art is one of the very few jobs that you don't actually need a no. You uh, got it backwards. Education for no, you got it backwards. There's very few jobs that you need a formal education. Right? You can you can name them all right now in on one hand. <laughs> Being like a doctor, an engineer, a scientist of some sort, right? Um, a lawyer. And no, you don't even need a diploma for a lawyer. You don't. <laughs> you can be a lawyer you can be a lawyer for yourself right now if you wanted to. You might be at a disadvantage because you don't know the laws, right? But you can learn it. You know? All on your own. The the books are available for you. But why is it important for engineer, specifically the engineer and doctor, it's really important to have some sort of degree. Why? Because it proves that you've spent enough time in, in school to know medical anatomy, like, memorized, right? You're, you're going to be putting your hands into somebody's body, potentially, if you're a surgeon, right? Like, you're, you're, you're potentially going to get someone killed if you don't know what the hell you're doing, Right? Uh, and engineers are on the same field, especially like people who create stuff for vehicles, like transportation, right? Like if you don't know, yeah. if you don't know, like if you're not educated and have certificates that pr prove that you know what you're doing, people get killed, right? Um, but a lawyer, you know, like you just need to know, know the laws. I think I have friend lawyers that don't have degrees. They went to law school, but they didn't necessarily get like a... Um, uh, uh, an actual certificate, right? Um, what other job is there? Oh, yeah, oh, like, or some sort of going back and feeding back into the system, some sort of scholarly job, like a historian or another educator, like a professor, right? Because you need to kind of know how the system works to then work within the system, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about any other job that really would needs you to have a college degree. It's very hard after if you really think about it. Okay. I mean, I mean uh, the need for a, for a degree in the oh, actual uh, okay thing different than the employers looking at your at your degree, right? Yeah, nobody does. They really yeah. don't. They might they might not want to hire you just because you haven't graduated from a from a good school. Nope, that just doesn't happen. If you if you're qualified for the work, they don't care. They will rather hire somebody that's more qualified for the work that has dropped out of school than somebody that has a diploma and is worthless. All right, so yeah, how, how do they know that like a 20-year-old guy is qualified for the job if he has no previous experience in the, in the work? If he's interned, if he did some work internships during his school and just got a job right out of it? Like what does that paper prove, right? Because you can, you can graduate with only getting Ds. Right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't prove anything, right? It really doesn't. 
And so I had a, I had a, I'm going to end it with this and I'm going to get it going. I have to go get some groceries real quick. Um, I had a, I, I dated this girl and she graduated from college with a communications degree and she went to for her first job interview and she brought her diploma with her and the only questions that they asked her were like what she knew about the work and she actually had no idea so she had to like pretty much improvise all the answers she was clueless right and uh she felt embarrassed too when she came back she's like oh my god i can't even i don't i didn't know what to do like i didn't know i like they kept on asking me about experience and I was like, well, there's one time I was working on a project in school, and it was kind of like this and that and then this, you know? And they're like, well, I don't know if that's similar. And they're like, what about this experience? And she's like, oh, yeah, there's another project that I did in school, you know? <laughs> right? right? And then and then, and then, then she never, like, she didn't even, like, even think to bring out her diploma after she realized what kind of, what was going on, like, what reality was like, what the real world is about, you know? And then um, she got the job anyway because her friend works there. And her friend's like, oh, yeah, we went to school together. Like, I vouch for her. She's a really hard worker. You give her a chance. And so she got the job. She worked the job for, like, a few years. She hated it. Like, she, it was pretty much nothing that she ever imagined it would be. The school did not prepare her for it. She felt like her degree is pretty much worthless. And I think now she's a photographer. <laughs> okay? And she's a very successful photographer. She went to school for nothing, pretty much. You get know what I'm saying? She has a piece of paper that says that she can work in communications, and when she did get a job there, she hated it, and she barely could do it well. Right? Yeah, so basically, you you should work for free for some time before you... Not for free. Internships are uh, are not for free. Uh, they, they shouldn't be, at least in America they're not. It's illegal. But I there's... there's... <clears throat> oh, man. You should look into it. To look into it, <laughs> um, but but yeah, like that that is going to be more valuable because you're going to learn. And when you do watch, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see what I'm talking about once you're in the actual workspace. Okay. But um, nice. all right. Well, I gotta go, guys. Thank you guys for a great class. I'll see you guys in the new year. You guys have a great holiday. Appreciate y'all. You too. Bye. You too. Uh, quick question. Uh, are, are we gonna have a are you gonna upload this class because I didn't get to see the feedback, so I didn't want to yeah, ask about of it. Of course. So let's check it. Yeah. Let's, okay, man. That was it. All right, later. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, Happy friends. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.